Hi, I would like to show you how to develop the function is prime in Python using test driven development using the unit test framework for the UpMax programming formalism course for the lesson testing. So the exercise is uh, quite simple or common. Like uh, is prime is one of my favorite functions to do a test driven development on. Um, it's a simple function. It uh, returns true if the input is a prime integer, like it's an integer number that is prime. Returns false if it's an integer number that is not prime. And if the input is not an integer, then it should give an error. So this is Python, so uh, you can check for your input arguments. Uh, we're going to work within the scaffolding of some kind of a GitHub repository that we're going to fork and then work within it and activate the continuous integration environment. Um, because the goal of this exercise is to develop this function within that testing framework. Uh, and this scaffolding helps us uh, to get there easier. So yeah, in the course there's, there's more technicalities because the students will do it in pair programming. For us, however, uh, we're go just going to create a fork of it going to de develop that function. It's in this file source slash package name slash testing questions pi. So testing is the name of the lesson today. And these are the questions or the exercises. Um, and the tests they are put in the tests folder, uh, which is just test underscore with the name of the lesson itself. Um, we're also going to modify, after that we're going to modify the readme to replace the the Richard Bilderbeck, which is the current owner of that repository uh, by our own username. Um, and as a bonus, we're going to make all those tests a pass. So uh, let's get going. So first step, we're going to create a fork. So I copy this URL. Um, I already have it here. I click on fork. And as an owner, I'm going to use DGOG. Whatever that means, it's okay. It's just not Richard It should be something else. Um, so now it's forking the repository. So you can still see the original owner of the repository. This is me now. And uh, let's take a look here at the actions. I'm gonna I'm gonna enable all of the uh, GitHub Actions things. So apparently I'm gonna enable them already here. So you can do this at a later stage as well. I know I like to do it first because when I make my first push, then, then these things they start rolling and I want that. I want these things to, to do stuff whenever I push my code online. All right, so here's my repository. These build batches, they all point to Richard Bilbeck. You can see it at the bottom of the screen that these point to Richard Bilbeck. We're gonna change those later. First, we're going to develop the is prime function. Let's take a look at the slide. Develop a function called is prime. I'm going to do this there. Um, all right, uh, that's great that I forked it, but there's also time to get it on my hard disk. So I'm going to see the PF. I'll make the PF. So, so it's for the programming formalism scores. And here I do get clone that thing. And then I go into the folder, and now I have a folder with the code of the fork. Because Joch was the owner. Um, now it's time to use Visual Studio Code. It's my favorite editor. You can pick your own. It's all okay. Whatever this is, I'm going to close it now. And I'm going to open the new folder of our beautiful new code. Programming formalisms. There it is. So, and there's, uh, yes, I trust the authors, because that is me. So let's take a look at the slide. We're going to take a look at, because the slide tells us that here are where the questions are, where we have to develop is prime, and here are the tests where we are going to develop is prime. So just open up those two. So let's first start with this one. Uh, source. The testing questions, all right. Yeah, testing is the lesson. Uh, oh, nice. All right, so it's here. So at the top, there's an example function is a zero. That's nice. So we can have a bit of an idea how to write functions again. 
and then here is our exercise. Let's take a look at the tests. So the tests are test slash test testing questions are beautiful, consistent naming there. Test testing questions. Uh, and they give they supply a function called is the tests for is zero. Alright, this is great. So we're gonna develop this function is prime. This will be easy. We just copy paste this stuff. Test is prime. And our first test will be if the thing has documentation. Well, I haven't written it yet, so that will fail. I like alphabet here, so I'm gonna, gonna put this on alphabet. So we have our first test. This, sh this should fail. Let's make sure th that it fails. So I'm gonna configure the Python tests. We're gonna use the unit test standard Python framework. The tests are in the tests folder. And all the files start with test underscore. So that means the thing can now theoretically run. Let's take a look because it doesn't appear to be that that it doesn't appear to be the truth yet. So why doesn't the thing not run? Is prime ah because the function is prime doesn't exist at all. All right, let's let's uh, make some scaffolding for that as well. Testing questions there. Uh, let's make it. Pop 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 pop. Um, I'm going to make it minimally, um, let's make a minimal test. Is prime, determine x is an integer that is prime. If x is an integer that is prime. Oh, I like more like this. Return true if x is an integer that is, if an integer that is prime. Return false. If x is an integer that is not prime, raises type error if x is not an integer. Alright, so also these are the things that I will test. I think this makes sense in English. Uh, we're going to make this come true in Python. Let's see if we can now run our tests. Uh, so here we have testing questions. I was just going to run all of them, see what happens. Bam! So testing questions, I can now even click here to run only these. And these pass, yeah, because I wrote is prime. So, next test. And I like to, to, to first do this thing with a type error. I feel, I feel it makes sense to make this as a first test. So if I call is prime with the text I am a string, I expect it to, throw a to raise a type error. So let's make sure that the, that the code breaks. Oh, beautiful, the code breaks. Um, I'm going to remove this. I know what's wrong. Uh, and I'm going to fix it. So here's the function is prime. If not is instance. If x is not an integer, then raise type error. x must be an integer. Beautiful. This could this could have been more luxurious, like showing what the type of x is and those kind of things. I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna see if I passed my test. I did. Nice. Now let's do a trivial uh, number of is prime. Assert false. For example, we know that uh, zero. Oh, let's do minus one is not a prime. Um, actually, we we know that minus one zero. And one, those are all not primes by definition. Um, and we can, we, I do all these three tests in one go. If x is less than two, return false, else return true. All right, I'll comment these out for a bit because I first need to prove that this fails. So let's uh, let's run it. Let's run the thing. Oh, let's remove the breakpoint. Let's run the thing. No, you should you should. Ah, it doesn't return anything yet. All right, all right, all right. What if you just put return true just to have something? Yeah, all right. So this fails now. So what it did until now, it returns uh, the num type or something. Um, but it now it's it uh, now it nicely fails, and here we're gonna fix it. If it's less than two, then. Uh, Beautiful. 
now we're gonna add our first uh, prime if is true is prime so, so two should be prime well this test will pass because well if it's less than two it will be false else it will be true so we need our first non prime for the test to fail so for example four is not a prime it's dividable by two and now it's time to to get the for loops out for i in range from 2 to x I, I don't care about optimization now if i modulo oh if x modulo i equals 0 return false else return true so this is just checking if it's a property visor um, note i do just use x i could also just use half x or the square root of x plus 1 that's a Mini, op mini optimization. I don't care at the moment. Let's see if it passed. This passes. All right. So I predict now I cannot make this test fail anymore. I can add one. Let's have a non prime that's also very big, like 25 or something. 25 is not a prime. All right. So I can't make this test fail anymore. That's great. So I'm now more or less done developing it. Git status, git and git commit developed is prime note that every cycle i did i didn't push to the github repository so all these things will come in in one go uh, that is okay for now but uh, if you're in a in a pair then it's good to, to for example change a uh, driver and navigator every uh, every time you've switched uh, ev every time you've done a tdd cycle um, all right, so the next thing is to modify the readme to replace Rishbildic by your own username. So let's do that. Um, well, I just use mousepad readme and I look for the word Rishbildic and I replace it by Joch in all documents, including this one. There's only one. Save, done, git add, git commit. Replace Richard Bilderbeek by Joch. You could also say in README. I, I, I feel it's a bit redundant. So, but feel, go ahead if you feel you need to. So we now did um, the exercise. Uh, we did a good job. So you could say, hey, I'm done now. What I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to make all the tests a pass. So let's take a look. So there's there are two tests that don't pass. One is the the linter. So that's rough. Rough is a linter. It, it checks our style, and this is the code coverage. Let's take a look what rough has to say about our style. You just click on it. You click on that thing, and it will take you to the problem. Um, and here are some uh, suggestions. Um, the cool thing is, I can I can fix this myself by hand, but instead what I'm going to do, I'm going to let rough fix it. So you can just do rough dot. Um, if you installed rough, I think it's pip install rough, then you get this. But you can also do rough fix. And um, so so now rough fixed. Well, most of those things. So now I only need to take a look at the last one. I'll just so we have to we have a magic value in this line. Well, let's take a look. Mouse pad that file and take a look at line 54. 54. <coughs> <coughs> so that's a number two. Um, let's call this lowest prime is two. And here, so we've replaced a magic variable. Um, that's very friendly of proof to remind us that we should never do that git add git commit fix style um, I could push this now uh, instead what I'm going to do I assume I fix this because if I do rough dot I see no problems anymore let's take a look at the other problem because that's measuring the code coverage and that's because that that, that thing needs to be activated um, so it says, well, all nice and dandy, but we uh, we can't upload it. 
to fix that go to codecov.io that's the thing I use I'm gonna log in uh, for all repositories and I'm when I log in as joch slash ratio builder bake let's see if I can do that <laughs> organizations organizations hmm. so the problem is that it needs to have let's see how can I how can I be someone else well I will show you how to do it um, for a repository that that um, I will just show you how to do it on this repository how I set it up being Richard Bilderbeek on my own repository so you can do it for your own so I won't get it to work for this repository because it has Joch as an owner and I don't know how to log in as Joch on this account um, so I won't but I'll show you how I would activate this thing so you click on the repository name or you search for it uh, because this is the exact same repository it already meshes 100% and what you need to do is in settings you need to regenerate a code coverage token so I'm going to regenerate it now after this video I will really regenerate it so this token will be will be useless uh, one minute after this video so now I have regenerated this token and I'm gonna use um, github action so I need this one so I'm going to copy it, you can just, just copy it and then this repository share it, it's a secret that means that uh, github cannot see it it's in here, secrets and variables, actions and this repository doesn't have a secret, I'm going to use jog anyways to paste it just to see if it works new repository secret and here is the thing there's the code of token there, pam pam add secret and maybe but probably not now the code coverage will run so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do git push because I fixed everything that needed fixing and with a little bit of luck and I would predict chances are zero we also get a good code coverage now in uh, but at least the, the code is linted is checked for style and, and that passes while we do that let's take a look at the front page of the read mean that we modified so you can already see that all the links are passing the spelling is correct the pack it can be built into a package code coverage was failing the code coverage was unknown because it could not upload it and let's take a look yeah so code coverage fails but it normally it would now pass and check package that worked and still works so that concludes this video in which I've showed how to develop the function is prime in Python using test driven development in the unit test framework by creating a fork of this repository. Um, that was all. I wish you a very good day and uh, bye.